baptism in the Holy Spirit. A Bible lesson in eight points. One. Long ago, the prophet Joel foresaw a time when Yahweh would pour out his spirit upon human beings. And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Two. Later, the prophet John the Baptist bore testimony about Jesus. I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. 3. Soon thereafter, God first poured out his Spirit upon Jesus at his baptism. When Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him, and behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. 4. Following his resurrection, Jesus promised the same Spirit to his followers. While staying with them he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. 5. 40 days later, the Spirit of God came upon Jewish followers of Jesus. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 6. Some months later, the Spirit of God also came upon Gentile followers of Jesus. The Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised, who had come with Peter, were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. 7. Lastly, the Spirit of God came upon disciples of John the Baptist. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. 8. Thus, Jewish and Gentile believers are all now baptized in the Holy Spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit.
There are seven sacraments in the Catholic Church, but other things can be sacramental. So what's the difference? We know the seven sacraments. There's baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, reconciliation, marriage, holy orders, and anointing of the sick. All of these are visible signs of the invisible presence of God. Through these visible signs, God becomes obviously present to us and gives us grace, whereas God is usually a bit invisible. Sacraments are great because, as humans, we experience the world in physical ways through our senses. But sometimes we hear other things being described as sacramental. This either describes something used for a sacrament, like sacramental wine, or describes something that has the key characteristic of a sacrament, in that it is a visible sign of the invisible presence of God. For the grammar fans, the noun sacrament gets turned into the adjective sacramental. A crucifix is a statue of Jesus on the cross. It's described as sacramental because it makes the sacrifice of Christ physically present to us. The church and the people in it are also visible signs of God's presence, so we call them sacramental. Actions of love and mercy towards others can be described as sacramental. When we act out of love, we make God physically present in the world through our actions. People can be described as sacramental in your life also. My mother always made the sacrificial love of God very present in our home, so I would describe her as sacramental too. Consider the ways you see God physically present in your world. How does God reach you? These things could be described as sacramental. They aren't sacraments, we only have seven of those, but they have similar qualities, so we call them sacramental.